One of my goals for the year has been to dive further into slicer settings so I can learn more about how they affect a print and share that info back with you. In the first video of this series, we covered thick bridges, which can really come in handy for functional parts by providing a thicker base for subsequent layers to build off of. Another thing I have seen lots of conversation on over the years is walls printing order. The value you choose here directly impacts your perimeters by determining which direction the toolpath is generated in. This is either inner to outer, outer to inner, or inner to outer to inner. For the most part, I've just left this setting as default, but there have been a few times where I've had some weird artifacts on the outside of a part, and so I will tweak these settings a little bit to see if I can get some better results. In today's video, we'll be diving into this setting to try to figure out how it impacts our prints and also determine when it's best to use each of these different options. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Just like before, the slicer we'll be using is Orca Slicer, but a lot of what's covered in this video will be applicable to other slicers as well. I know for a fact that Orca Slicer and Bamboo Studio both have the three different wall order options, and as far as I'm aware, Prusa Slicer and Cura have inner to outer and outer to inner. Let's start by running through the three options, and yes, by the end of this video, you will be tired of hearing me say inner or outer. Today's video is brought to you by MicroSwiss. Based in the US, MicroSwiss manufactures high quality 3D printer upgrades, including extruders, hot ends, and nozzles for over 150 different models. I've been running their hardware in my machines for over six years and have always been impressed by their meticulous attention to detail. Their newest line of drop-in hot ends called Flowtech features high flow and its leak proof design allows for cold nozzle swapping. Flowtech is constantly expanding, and they recently added a version for the Bamboo Lab X1 and P1 series of printers. From plated brass and hardened steel CM2 to CHT and Diamondback, they have nozzles available for any application. Links are in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. First up, we have inner to outer, which for the most part seems to be the default setting that most profiles are using. As the name implies with this setting, the innermost wall is printed first and it moves its way outward to the farthest out or outermost perimeter. Orca Slicer's documentation says that this order is the best for overhangs. The reason for this is that the overhanging line will always be the outermost. Having it print last means it has more material to adhere to, thanks to its neighboring wall having just been printed right before it, versus having it sort of teeter-tottering at the edge of the previous layer. The only real downside given to this ordering is a hit to surface quality. Since the outer layer is the one that's getting printed last in this case, it's sort of getting smashed or pressed up against the inner walls. Next up, we have outer inner, which in this scenario, the outermost wall is printed first and it works its way inward. Orca's documentation says that this ordering provides the best surface finish as well as better tolerances, since the outer wall is able to print undisturbed by those inner perimeters. Based on the previous ordering, we know that with outer inner, we are going to be taking a hit to our overhangs. The only other trade-off mentioned is a hit to the Z seams, since this will be the first extrusion on each new layer. Finally, we have what seems to be the newest option, which is inner, outer, inner. Walls generated with this ordering print from the inside out, but a one line gap is left on the inside walls, so that way the outer wall could be printed first, and then after that wall is printed, it goes back in and fills the gap that it had previously left. In order for this mode to work correctly, you must have at least three walls, otherwise it will just work from outer to inner. Similar to the outer to inner direction, this mode is supposed to give you the same high quality external surface finish and the dimensional accuracy. While this mode will still take a hit to the overhangs compared to inner to outer, it should have a nicer Z seam since it's starting off by printing the inner perimeter layers and then jumping out to the outer layer. Now that we know a bit about these three options, it's time to do some printing. 
For our printer, we'll be using the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and we will use PLA for the material. My goal was to pick a filament that would really emphasize any differences between these three different modes. So I was leaning towards a metallic or silk at first, but there is sometimes a bit of unpredictability to those colors due to the additives for the silk or metallic color. So I ended up going with just more a standard gray PLA filament. I also wanted to go with a decent variety in the objects I printed so that hopefully we could see what the walls look like on these parts in some different scenarios. In the end, I decided on a primitive of a cylinder, the Voron Tast Calibration Cube, an extruder piece that I grabbed off of the Clockwork Extruder, and the Autodesk FDM Test. As for the slicer settings, I just went with generic PLA and used the default 0.2 millimeter profile. The only thing I changed was the wall count from the default of two to three, so that way I'd be able to use the inner, outer, inner ordering correctly. The only other thing I feel may be worth mentioning is that for the ball generating mode, I used classic, which tends to be what I use most of the time. All that was left was to print out the different plates of parts and see if any of these differences were visible. Let's start off with the Voron cube. At first glance, I didn't see any obvious differences, but upon closer inspection, I was able to spot a few. When looking at printed parts straight on, some of the imperfections of the layer lines can sort of get lost in the layers around them. But if you look at maybe a 45 degree angle from either the top or bottom and you shine some additional lighting, you can really start to see the inconsistencies stand out of the wall. Outer inner and inner outer inner had near identical surface finishes. But when I put either of them up against the inner outer ordering, we can see that there are much more inconsistencies with the outer wall. It might not look significant on this part, but if we were to scale this up and use different types of filaments with various types of sheens, it would be quite substantial. The next difference I found is in the top corner on the side of the cube labeled as Y. For this, inner outer and inner outer inner look near identical, but there is an obvious hit to quality on the outer to inner direction. Looking at the sliced file, we can see that this is where the seam is located for those new layers, which was one of the cons of using this layer type. Clearly, there is a slight delay on the filament flowing from the retraction that's happening on the previous layer change. I found a more extreme example on the same cube on the inside where it had quite a sizable gap compared to a much cleaner looking seam on the inner outer or inner outer inner cubes. For the three cylinders, I ended up mixing them up in front of me, shining a light on them and trying to just pick which one had the lowest surface quality to see if I can determine which one was inner outer. And I did end up guessing this correctly, but if I'm being honest, the hit to quality on these cylinders as far as surface quality goes was really comparable between the three of them. The only real difference I found between the three cylinders was once again in the Z seam with inner outer and inner outer inner looking near identical and outer inner just having lots of gaps and just sort of inconsistent starting and stopping points. For the part from the clockwork extruder, once again, inner outer had a slightly rougher surface finish. And just like on the other two, outer to inner had a rougher Z seam on a section of it. The only thing I noticed different on these three was that there is a section with a slight overhang. And I would argue that based on what I see here, that inner outer does have the cleanest looking overhang, which would match with what Orca Slicer said. However, the other two don't have a bad overhang. There just is a bit more stringing on it. After seeing those three parts, I was really curious to see how the Autodesk FDM test would stack up against each other because it's just a much more complex print with a lot more things to check. The first thing I noticed was as soon as these plates cooled and I popped them off, all of the little tolerance columns fell out from 0.2 to 2.5 on outer inner and inner outer inner. But on the inner to outer one, the 0.2 cylinder, the 0.2 tolerance column was actually stuck in place. I was able to just push that column out by just using a little bit of force, but it was the first time I've gotten to see in front of me the hit to tolerances that you may get using inner to outer ordering. 
On the side of the tall column, inner to outer definitely had a slightly rougher surface finish. I really didn't notice any other standout differences when it came to the bridges, but when I flipped all of the parts over to look at the underside, I got to see the difference in quality of the large overhang. The biggest difference was that the grouping of the overhangs was just much tighter on the inner to outer direction, while the other two ordering modes had quite a bit of a gap between the layer lines. Also sort of expected at this point, but anywhere that there was a visible external seam, outer to inner by far looked the worst. Based on the definitions in Orca Slicer and my own testing with these printed parts, I see zero reason to use outer to inner ordering. The exception to that would be if you're using a slicer that only offers inner to outer and outer to inner. While outer to inner does provide you with a cleaner external surface compared to inner towards outer direction, the Z seam gap and just the Z seam quality really keeps me from recommending it. This is especially true when having inner to outer to inner, which gives you the same benefits, having a cleaner external surface, having tighter tolerances, but you don't take a hit to your Z seam. It makes sense to me why the default is inner to outer. If you aren't printing out parts that have lots of sort of large flat walls, then the hit to surface quality will be less noticeable. And the improvement in overhangs that you get with inner to outer is really nice. However, for my functional part profiles, so when I'm printing things like printer parts or printer accessory parts or really anything that's gonna have multiple pieces fitting together, my new default is going to be inner, outer, inner. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have a better understanding of what the three different wall generating orders mean and what situations may be best to use one over the other. I'd love to know in the comments down below which ordering is your default and if there's any other differences that you maybe have noticed while using those different walls that we didn't see in these few test prints. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a new video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel further, I'll leave links in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.